Mithun, your latest offering, Shamshera's music is out and it got a big thumbs up from the audience. You have not just composed the music, but also written most of the song. Yeah. Does that make the journey for a composer special when you are so in, in closely involved with the whole music process? I think uh, my perspective is Vishal, ki being a music composer, you have to be closely involved in the process. You have to be very, very intricately involved in every process. Even if I'm not writing a song, if I'm working with a writer, it's very important for me to go to the core of the emotion, the core of the expression and uh, understand what the film needs, what the director wants and what needs to be done right from the poetry to the melody, to the orchestration, the arrangement. We'll speak about it more in detail, but I think we're answering your question that it's not necessary that if I'm writing, I'm, I have to be more closely involved. In fact, many a times uh, I come up with a basic thought for a song as the basic idea and then I share it uh, with the poet and then he obviously takes it a few notches higher. But uh, understanding the core of a song is my job in any, in under any circumstance. How would you like to describe the soundscape of Shamchera? Maybe the instrument that you have used uh, to the treatment you have given to the song, keeping in mind that this is uh, a period film. Obviously, as you said, being a period film, there was a certain, uh, a certain, uh, uh, you know, a certain soundscape to the entire film. But it's not just that, Vishal. So, so keeping in mind the period element, we went with a lot more acoustic, a lot more skin, a lot more bamboo, uh, a lot more reed, just to give in that, you know, a lot more stroke. Keep it very acoustic, very organic. But I think it's not just that. With Shamshira, there was a certain aura that Karan Malhotra wanted. That Shamshira is, he is human. He is, uh, you know, he is like somebody like one of us, probably 300, 200 years back. But at the same time, there is something about him which is very divine, which is which is very supernatural. You know, he is the he is the rock. He is the uh, the the beacon of hope. So that divinity had to come across in in the soundtrack. And we I wanted to bring out. You know, uh, there are a lot of Indian sounds which are very very uh, ethereal in nature. You know, whether we speak of the of the Basuri or the Santur. Uh, certain skin drums, you know, the dimidi. I wanted to bring out all these instruments in the soundtrack and present them in a way which are very globally relevant. So that was the vision me and Karan had. Uh, we had long discussions over the soundscape. I, he, he took me through a lot of colors and uh, palettes, keeping in mind, even before he had casted, he, what kind of characters are we talking about? You know, so we went through that process and then we finally came together with what we can call as the sound of Shamshir. Great. So, so, uh, so, how is the sound uh, of Shamshira is different from Bali because Ranveer Kapoor is playing uh, a double role? It's a very interesting question. Look, uh, Shamshira is he is the foundation of the film. Uh, Shamshira is uh, uh, the the highest level of virtue or the highest level of the character's evolution. Okay. And uh, Bali is a part of Shamshira. I can't reveal too much at this point. I think three days more to go. Sure. But uh, Bali is a part of Shamshera and we can look at the film as Bali's journey because ultimately he is a part of Shamshera and he's because called to be Shamshera. So uh, at the same time, Bali, and Bali adds a lot more fun. Bali is a lot more nonsensical. Bali is a lot more quirky. But at the same time, he has the heart of Shamshera. So there's an entire journey in the film. Even from a sound perspective, you will see that journey. The difference probably, if I speak about the song, if you go Ji Uzur, uh, you can yeah. see the quirkiness and the energy of Bali. I mean, you have the title track, you will get the Thera or Shamshera. Sure. So that's the journey, something like, I can put it this way. So the other song which I really liked is a song called Fitur. Uh, the lyrics of which is of course written by film director Karan Malhotra. I really like the treatment that you have given to that song, where we hmm. can hear Vani, Vani's character whispering those lines during the underwater sequence uh, yeah. and the use of chorus. Does the process become more exciting when film director gets involved so closely uh, because he's the one who's going to decide how he's going to film uh, those, those, those songs? Yeah, obviously. I think a director being involved is, is a very, very important element. Even if you go back in the history of Indian film cinema, we will, we will see whenever we've had directors who have been passionate for music, we've got the best of films. If we talk of Gurudat Saab, we talk of Raj Kapoor Saab, you talk of Raj Khosla Saab, you talk of Manmohan Desai, you talk of Subhash Ghai, you talk of Mani Ratnam, you know, and obviously in my generation, Mohit Suri, 
and obviously now i would talk very uh, highly of karan malhotra mm-hmm. i think it's it's i think it's it's a given a director is he is the captain of the ship and wherever he leads us i think all the hods will head in that direction so i think it's very very important so how tough was it to manage such a grand scale production say for a film like shamshera with like so many chorus singers keeping in mind the flavor of the movie and what was the brief that was given to you by karan malhotra the brief was uh as i told you ki we uh, it's a period film but then uh, speaking more about karan's personality karan malhotra doesn't think anything small you know for him everything is larger than life karan malhotra is 70 mm personified so everything had to be big everything had to have a certain resonance to it everything needed to have depth to it and uh, i think he came with a vision of bigness i think that's his forte that's something we've seen in his past work as well and i think he came to me for my melody i think the way if i can quote him on his behalf over here because that's what he wanted so it's it's an amalgamation of mithun and karan malhotra uh, put together with the melody and bigness coming together that was our intention and uh, yeah uh, there's a lot of hollowness also in the soundtrack if you see because karan wanted it to be that way like you spoke about the song fitur you know the way he envisioned the song was very very hollow that's why i used instruments i've used only one tabla in the song it's not a tabla section i've used the ghatam i've used ghungru live ghungrus i've used a santur instruments which we could play with which we could get more resonance if you listen to uh, say one stroke of the santur you know there are these harmonics which keep multiplying and we wanted to capture them and we wanted to give them space to enjoy the, the resonance of these instruments that's why we kept less instruments and the way he shot it the way it's come together the way it's sung you spoke about the whispers i think i must mention about neeti mohan because i think she's really developed this craft of voice culture as we call it we did that i obviously got arijit who's got great control on his vocals i've used his voice in a very in, in a mid and lower register and i really didn't want him to go uh, very high to get that intimacy vocally to get that grain and yeah and then the classical we put a hindustani classical choir to it uh, the part ye ishq ki barish hui mujhko teri khwahish hui so that's actually not a regular chorus we actually developed a entire section of hindustani classical uh, choirs uh, most of them students of uh, uh, pandit bhavdeep jaipur wale ji so his students came and i i briefed them about what i want and we just put together an entire section to bring again again, again the grandeur of uh hindustani classical music on screen and celebrate it in a very very unapologetic manner you know you just mentioned two singers neeti mohan and arijit singh uh you know you are somebody who always been experimenting with the voices how do you decide which song would be suitable for which singer and what is it about um, neeti mohan and and arijit singh that makes you uh, record with them uh, most of your songs see first of all to i get a lot of requests i'd like to clear this using your platform i get a lot of requests from fans about uh, casting singers you know and uh, sometimes people very easily get miffed also if i don't respond to their requests or, or something like that but i want to tell them that we completely respect our fans but uh, casting a singer is like it's a very very technical process in itself uh, at least for me the way i see it there there, there are parameters called there's something called as range there is something called as register there is something called as grain tonality there are various things every singer has his own ground from where he operates and depending on what i need for for that particular song uh depending on what am i i what am i looking for in that particular song also the key of the song uh every singer for example if i'm in a d minor you know uh, a particular singer may sound in a particular way in that key if i change the singer in the same key the song may sound completely different so we have to respect these these laws which are in place and being a, a student uh, of music from childhood i've been trained i respect these laws a lot and i think we all should and then comes in the creative side of it of what kind of a character are we talking what kind of uh, uh, you know what kind of a chemistry is there between the voices what kind of pronunciation are we looking at what kind of aura do we want to create and then obviously we cast uh the right singer for the song you know you are somebody who is very passionate about music and you because you write your own songs sometimes uh, even sing them 
how do you know when a song is ready i think it's a feeling vishal it's a very good question when my director briefs me or when i want to write about something i obviously take my time i pray i seek i search uh you know i look above i spend time on an instrument on my piano or i write something but when i get a feeling like you know that this sounds complete uh, i still remember it was one one quiet afternoon mohit suri had just left after briefing me for ashiki 2 and after the discussion i just remember i was on the piano and and the first melody that came to me what i played was that feeling only felt ki the song has come you know it just feels complete until the time i don't get that feeling i don't even present my songs so a, a feeling just tells you ki yeah it's you know you feel at home you feel at rest you know i have many questions about your music process but would you say there is a creative bankruptcy today in the film music where a lot of pressure is put on the composers to deliver uh, songs which should become instant hit uh, you know we of course have heard many labels saying hame hit gana chahiye uh, how do you deal with such pressure uh, mitan i actually don't uh, i don't take these kind of pressures i do music to uh, so that i could avoid pressure in life that's why i chose this profession i think i've been very blessed uh, vishal if i speak of because i've always done music on my own terms i've always enjoyed doing what i'm doing uh, even in a in a very artistic film like anwar i did a song like uh, mola mere mola and and people made it the biggest song ever mm. you know, i didn't do that people did that you know so be it anwar be it the train be it basik pal be it ashiki to sanam re kabir singh shamshera i'm just trying to say that i I'm, i just feel blessed ki i do what i enjoy doing the most and i'm grateful to the people of this country who have made that music so universal so massy for you know and it's it's not it's not restricted to a limited audience it's all there so i think that i don't believe in the concept of hit i don't believe in that concept i believe in the concept of a, of a doing good music and i believe good music will make its place you know like a river like an unstoppable river it goes it diverts it may take time there's a song of mine called kuch is tarah which is sung by atif aslam and the song wasn't promoted at all it doesn't even have a video you, you know it's very difficult to believe but the song has made its way i recorded that song in 2007 today it's considered to be one of the cult classics between myself and atif aslam so i think good music will make its way and i don't believe in that pressure or the category of something called as hit you know as a creator who certainly wants his songs to have longevity what do you feel about this new trend of artists coming up from social media platforms like we have seen a uh, singer breaking out uh, doing a single on on youtube or on an instagram i think there are pros and cons to it on one side i would definitely encourage it because you know there there is a lot more plat lot more platform available now for artists to to break through and for their music to reach people and that's why we've got so many independent artists also in the last yeah. few years who are doing so well and that's very very it's very very heartening to see but the other side of it is that sometimes it encourages a lot of mediocrity as well it yeah yeah it does and that is that is definitely a point of concern because we are a country of music when we talk of bharat bharat desh has given hindustani classical carnatic music to the world yeah. so even as a film culture this is the land of madan mohan this is the land of mashad sa the land of lakshmikan paralal rd bomen so i think that standards should be upheld there should be a collective conscious between all creative people ki yeah use the platform but i think we should use it very very responsibly you know talking about lakshmikan paralal I have to talk to you about your dad, you, whom you fondly address as the Superman of your life. Yeah. Uh, your dad is, of course, Indian cinema's one of the successful music arranger, and al- also is the younger brother of Pyare Lal Ji, of course, of Lakshmi Kant Pyare Lal fame. Right. So, how is your perspective is similar or different to your father when it comes to melodies? I think uh, a lot of my feel, what people talk about, I think it comes from my father. uh because you know uh in the words of of mahesh bhat sahab when i was a teenager i had met him and he told me ki uh we would have sessions with your father and your father would make ordinary songs extraordinary with his melodies and his and his arrangements this is something that he told me on record 
and i just was understanding more and more and i understood the importance of a melody that while we talk of in today's times we talk of progressions we talk of drops we talk of beats we talk of all is welcome and it's it's very very important but i still believe that a melody is 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 the core it's the heartbeat of any creative piece of music no matter what genre it is you know even if you talk of uh you know i i think the kacha badam song was really viral last year you know and, and a lot of people ask me my opinion on it and believe me even when i hear that song i somewhere in it i see a very beautiful melody and i feel that is the reason why people connect uh to to music so melody is very very important and that quality came in me from my father i think obviously my perspective my soundscape is very different from the way he would do music uh but yeah my melody at heart comes from the training that my father gave me and the vision that he showed me so then is there a song or a soundtrack which had left a lasting impression on you while growing up or the one you feel like uh, sort of changed your life when it comes to music i think a, lo- a lot of them uh, i was greatly influenced by the soundtrack of rangila i think rahman sir is definitely a guru to most of the composers in my generation uh we can talk of music of tal i think tal was a very very path breaking album in its time uh i love the music of virasat again by anu malik ji i think it was uh you know the music of border again by by anu ji uh we can talk of the music of pardesh done by nadeem shravan so that's when i was in school i was in my 7th grade 8th grade so these albums were very very influential on me and once i passed my ssc i was honestly not interested in academics anymore uh i was quietly steadily moving towards what i'm hungry for and that is professional music so then i started looking towards that you know like 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 we discussed you write your own lyrics of some of your songs do you think lyrics need to be great for uh, for you to fully appreciate a song i think it's a very personal thing i think uh, every person sees their own poetry or their own lyrics in the, in their own way for me i have always felt that good poetry is very very important uh for music i was really blessed that i happened to meet saeed kadri saab very early in my career uh you know who literally showed me uh, the impact that poetry can have on a human mind uh that said and done that even if we even if you're taking uh, a less literal route to a song but i believe that there has to be a thought process and there has to be a certain uh culture to the words that we use and i think that's part of a composer's vision uh how important is solitude to you when it comes to being creative mithun <laughs> i think it's very important it's very very yeah. at least for me personally i spend a lot of time alone now and then also i have i have a much bigger team i have multiple teams working with me they are working under me but uh, i spend a lot of my time even my college days i wouldn't spend at college i would actually bunk college and come uh, to my father's studio because i wanted to spend time alone so i think solitude has been a very important part of my growth as a human being and as a composer both and even today i i need those moments I, there are days when i ask my my assistants not to come i ask my team members not to come so i can just spend time with myself and i keep searching my my core self you know i don't want to when lose that alone. yeah when you are alone yeah, yeah. otherwise starting in there are too many people to praise you around it can really be, that's very dangerous uh, for any creative space and in in any field i think sure sure you know i'm starting this new segment so uh, uh, let's do this it's called my first so which was the first album that you fell in love with i think gumra by lakshmikant pairalal and yeah. tezab as well i was i was very small back then but i loved that music Do you remember when and how you picked up a musical musical instrument for the first time, professionally? When I was three or four, I picked up a tambourine in my house. And professionally? Professionally, I started learning the keyboard at the age of eleven. And by the time I was sixteen, I I wanted to be a concert pianist. Do you remember when you performed live for the first time? Be difficult to remember that. but yeah must have been probably around uh, around basik pal or anwar around that time something like that and finally do you remember when you heard your song in public for the first time oh yeah that day i won't forget 
i was sitting on my uh, my my living room sofa uh and i happened to hear a line which sounded very familiar it took me a moment to digest it i realized ki it is uh, that line o tanha hai tujh bin da na 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 da na na da na 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 tanha badan tanha hai ro na meri aankhe rahe क्यों हो गया तू बेवफा मुझको बता दे वजह तेरे बिन इट वाज प्लेइंग एन ऑटो एक्चुअली डाउन माय बिल्डिंग एंड दैट्स द फर्स्ट टाइम आई वाज आई थिंक म्योर म्योरली 20 इयर्स ओल्ड दैट टाइम एंड आई रियलाइज्ड दैट माय म्यूजिक माय सॉन्ग इज प्लेइंग इन एन ऑटो इन मुंबई इट वाज अ वेरी 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 हार्टिंग फील मिथुन थैंक यू सो मच एंड बेस्ट ऑफ लक थैंक यू थैंक यू विशाल नाइस टॉकिंग टू यू